We thank our worship team one more time. Thanks for ushering us towards the throne. For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith, and this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one in this room can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus. What an honor. To do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Fourteen years ago, I was sitting stage left at a church that wasn't in this space, but it had a similar layout. I remember being, oh, 15 to 20 rows back, and for whatever reason, feeling a nudge, a push, almost a smack across the face like I had never felt before. I don't get nudges all that often. But I had a nudge in this church service, and it just said, Jep, I just want you to take a big old giant step towards high school students. High school students. But it was so clear. The nudge was so pushing that I turned and looked at Rachel like, I got to get involved with high school students. Okay, let's do that. Signed up for a small group leader role at our church. Started to be a house group leader at our church. Found myself in a job interview position just a year later to work at Wheaton Academy. I said yes to the opportunity. One of the greatest privileges that I have had in my life is the opportunity to work here at Wheaton Academy. I'm standing in front of a classroom full of students and I begin just loving high school students. I love the chaos and the good and the celebration and the lows. I love the questions and the thoughts. I love the search for wisdom and discernment. I love the life-altering decisions. I love the change. I love the growth. I love the movement. I love the motion. And I love that God just races towards you. And I love when people meet that God here. I got asked to speak in chapel. I prepped for five months. I wrote it. I typed it. Then I rewrote it. Then I hand wrote it. I remember pacing in my backyard just preaching at the bushes. My neighbors probably thought I was, well, you know, unique. I stood up here and I delivered my first message to Wheaton Academy. This is years ago. And I just hung on for dear life to this podium. I couldn't leave it. I would start to move. And I would just hang on and go back to my notes. After I delivered my heart and soul to a group of 700 opinions, I went to one of my soccer players. Soccer players are awesome. But in this moment, I said, what'd you think, man? Oh, man. Oh, chapel? Yes. Yeah. Just happened just now. What'd you think? Good. Man, you hung on to that podium like a life raft, huh? <laughs> and it was a little long. Thanks, man. <laughs> he like scurries off to lunch. I'm in like a puddle of my own sorrow. <laughs> and now today, if I kind of go full circle here, I don't really remember what I talked about in that talk. I remember a lot of like, how did I do, and what was my role, and how, how tight to the podium did I hold? A lot of me. And so if you gave me one last chance to talk in chapel from this role that I sit in, I would say the following. And I would want you to hear it as if we were talking one-on-one, -on -one, but we can't. We have to talk one to 700. And I know some of you incredibly well, and others of you I don't. But as a community, as a group, I know who we are, and I would say this. Amidst the chaos and the motion and the movement and the growth and the questions and the confusion and the good and the bad and the relationships and all the other that fits right in between, I would say this, God made you. He just made you when he didn't need to or have to. God made you when he could have made you differently. And then I would say he loves you when he could have, should have turned his back on you. He not only loves you, but he races towards you with the gift of his son so that he can have relationship with you. He made you. He loves you. He races towards you, Wheaton Academy. And he doesn't leave you. He is with you in whatever maroon seat you are seated in. He is with you. And then beyond anything I would have ever dreamed or imagined, he says, come on. 
I've got a call for your life, and it's so beyond anything this world or this space could ever ask of you. That's what I would want you to know. I mean, if you boil it down, chapel after chapel, year after year, I would want you to know he made you, he loves you, he races towards you, he is with you when he doesn't have to be, and he's got this inviting tone of a call where he says, let's go. I got a call for your life that's wilder than you could ever imagine. That's what I think God calls of us. It's five simple nuggets, and I just wonder if you need to hear one of them today. Ethan and I are playing a game right now. Ethan's the little guy that ran up on stage and just said, yeah, I'll, I'll take over here. He just kind of ran up front. He starts waving to the front row, and then he's just like, yeah, I'll just gather my fan club here. <laughs> it's the personality of Ethan. But at home, we're playing a game, we're playing a game called hide and seek, simple game. But we play it different right now. I say, Mason, you hide. Sorry, Mason, not Mason. Uh, Ethan, Ethan, you hide and I will seek, <laughs> like just giggles, pretty cute kid, closes his eyes as tight as he can, turns his head just a little, grimaces, takes his right hand and crosses it across his face, his left hand and crosses it just to be sure that if he can't see me, then I can't see him. He turns his shoulder and he just chuckles like crazy. This is our game. <laughs> this is my life beyond Wheaton Academy. <laughs> I want to use this quick picture to invite you into two, two different things. Think of it. Eyes crunched, hand, hand, turn, shoulder, hiding. And yet I can just see him. See, I think there's two things that I would like to be sure that you hear that lay on the foundation of God made you, he loves you, he races towards you. And he invites you into this remarkable call. On the foundation of that, I would say this. If I could ask some of you in a maroon seat right now, and you're out there right now, I would just ask you, if you would give Jesus Christ your life, if you would just hand him your life, you see, being here for 12 years, I've noticed that a lot of folks are around all the things that we should be around. I mean, think about it. You're around Bibles and Bible verses and worship songs and reflective moments and times of silence and chapel talks and video streams of chapel talks and Bible classes and the list goes on. And I wonder if in the mix of all of those things, if anyone has ever hit the pause and approached you in a seat and just said, fill in your blank, fill in the, the blank with your name. Stephen, Peter, whole word. Would you give him your life? I went up to a student one time, I said, do you love the Lord? Wow, oh, man, it's been a while since I was asked that. It's been a while since you've been asked that, here. And so I wanna hit the pause button right now and just say, is there anyone out there who would maybe say today, you would give him your life? You've been in this clenched, crouched, hiding position. You're claiming somewhere in your head that you've done too many things wrong, you've done them too many times, your background isn't necessarily the background that most people have, you don't have the biblical knowledge or depth that you think you should have. Jeff, Jeff Mr. Brooke, if you only knew, if you only knew the list, the laundry list, like I get that, yes, yes, grace, forgive, but me? And you're clenched, turned, hiding, and the greatest seeker, the greatest rescuer, the greatest inviter, the greatest giver of life is standing right in front of you saying, I want it all. I want it all. I want you to hand me your life. I wonder if someone in the room today is in that spot. We've been around it all. But today's the day where you say, yeah, my life needs to be his. I'm tired of running around the situation. I need to stop hiding. I need a hand in my life, for it is by grace you have been saved so that no one can boast.
So don't compare yourself to the person next to you. Just hand him your life. Second maroon chair that some of you are seated in. I wouldn't necessarily have the word life on it. I would have the word call. I would have the word call. It was that fifth of those five foundational things I opened with. Some of you are in the same Ethan hide and seek position, even though you maybe have already said yes to giving your life to Christ. It's wild and it's fascinating. I mean, you're, you're in this spot where you've given your life to Christ, but when, it's, when this question is, hey, come on, help me build my kingdom. Help me bring light into dark places. Help me bring good into evil. Be obedient in a world that tells you to be disobedient. Live with love rather than live for self. Come, I have this remarkable call for you. Everything you've ever dreamed of who you could be is about yay big. But once you realize that I made you, I love you, I will race towards you, I will be with you, and I have a call to do remarkable things with your life. The plans are already in place. Come on! Some of you are playing this strange game of hide and seek. You're sitting in Christianity like this, and you're covering and you're turning, and the inviter, the rescuer, the giver of freedom, the giver, the giver of life, the one who should just leave you in the muck and the mire says, come, come, live a life that reflects my image, that imitates me to other people. Build my kingdom. And some of you are looking at this invitation, this call, and you're just sitting in old sin and maybe bad relationships and fatigued lifestyle and excuses of, oh, I'm a high school student, or maybe at the end of college, or da, 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 da. And the inviter who should have left you in the muck didn't just save you, dust you off, and leave you for later. Says, I'll save you with my son. Come, come on, help me. Help me. Me? Me? Help you? Yeah. Plan A. Call. And some of you are hiding. And I don't know why. Other than I am fully aware that the life of a high school student is very tough. Very challenging. Very full. And maybe it's just a word today that you needed to hear Say yes to his call. Say yes to his call. He has great works which God has prepared in advance for you to do. Why would you hide from that call? My challenge to you, Wheaton Academy, is to remember the foundation of what I think you need to know. God made you, didn't have to, wanted to. He loves you. He's given you the gift of his son. He's racing toward you, racing like a father towards a prodigal son. He will be with you. The God of the universe will be with you in that maroon seat right now. And then he says, come, I got great stuff for you. And he calls you. And I wonder if people in this room today might need just to hand him their life for the first time. You've been hiding? And he's right in front of you saying, I want it all. Come on. Or I wonder if someone in here is like, yeah, I'm Christ follower, gone through the motions. I need to make this my own. This call you're talking about? Yeah, I want that. Shocking to me in a Christian school. No one in here loves lukewarm faith. No one loves looking at it, watching it, or living it. So let's be done with it and race towards the call of obedience and freedom and goodness that builds a kingdom that is better than ours. Yes? Arr! Yes? All right, here Here's my invitation. Here's my invitation to you. We're going to play one more song in chapel here. And during that song, if you are like, yep, I've been in the environment but have never handed my life over, I mean, if you would want to do that during this song, you can You can go and chat with any faculty member. For goodness sakes, I'll be up front. If you want to come up and just whisper the word life, hand it in my life. I can pray for you, give you a fist bump, a high five, whatever. Or maybe you're in a spot over here where you're like, you know what, I've I've been waiting. I don't know why. 
literally three weeks from graduation, and I've been waiting. It's not too late for you to say, call. I'm going to say yes to that call for greatness beyond my wildest dreams. Same thing. You can go tell a faculty member who might be standing in the back. You can come up here. You can just whisper the word to me, call. I'm in. High five, fist bump, prayer, whatever it takes, we'll send you into this final song. But never forget Wheaton Academy. You serve a God who made you when he didn't have to, loves you, oh, with his son, races towards you when he should run the other direction, will stay with you and not leave you in the muck and the mire, and then has a call for you. Says, hey, come on. Let's bring light into a ridiculously dark world. Would you give him your life? Or would you say yes to the call? Let's stand for this song.